This button drives me crazy because developers often misuse it. They make a bunch of columns when what they should be using are content types. Let's say I have a transportation list. I've got cars, I've got boats, but boats and cars are two different things, meaning they have some columns in common, like they all share price and seats. But where things start to get weird is boats don't really have transmission the same way a car does. And then is convertible, that's definitely a car specific column. So to not confuse your users, maybe you make a transportation type column and this choice column helps distinguish. But here's where you can start to drive your users nuts. When they go to add new item, if they wanna make a canoe, they come down here and fill out the fields, but now you're giving them all these car fields to fill out, which can cause confusion or just annoy them. Do you see here how transmission is required? If you start requiring fields, your users are gonna populate it just to get it out of the way. So you might end up with garbage data you have to fix later. And this seems harmless, but at your business, you know the price of vehicles right away, but sometimes you don't know the price of boats. Well, to get around this, your users are just gonna start entering dumb data just to fill it and you might get some really inaccurate reporting so instead of having this nonsense we're going to use content types if we scroll to the top and select settings and click on site information view all site settings select site content types and click on create content type i'm going to call this one boat and down here, we're going to choose the type. So we can use document content types, which we're going to show in a second. We're going to start with list content types. And then let's choose items. So it's a blank canvas and click create. And let's create some columns. I'm going to make one called price. By the way, category help you organize. And if you make a lot of SharePoint columns, they're a lifesaver. I'm gonna choose the currency field, click save. And I've made a few more columns, including seats, and I'm gonna call it done. I'm gonna follow the same steps to create a vehicle content type. We're gonna repeat that process again, but this time with a car content type. I had to create some new fields, but watch. If I click add from existing, I can select price from earlier and not have to create it again. When I'm all done, I'm going to go back to my list, come here into settings, go to list settings, and this is key. Click on advanced settings, click on allow management of content types, click OK, and then scroll to add from existing site content types, select boat, select car, and then OK. And watch this. If I select this price column and go to edit site column settings, the default is optional but I could set it to required. And this will make the price column required for car, but not for boat. And watch this, under new, when I select it, I get boat or car. But this item one is kind of useless, so we're gonna click change new order button, and we're gonna unselect visible. And if we go back to the list, if I go under new, I have boat and I have car. And when I select car, I have transmission and prices required and other car related fields. But when I click on boat, you'll see that I don't have transmission. I have whole material and price is not required. You'll see my data is nice and clean. My users have a great experience and I could even get fancy and make views specific to certain data by going to edit current view and doing things like where content type is equal to boat. Content types get really fun with document libraries. SharePoint's cool, but have you ever wanted to become a power platform solutions architect, like really know how all these tools fit together? If so, we've got a free 45 minute training. Over a hundred people have already done it and it's gotten great reviews. It's free. It's in the description. Go check it out. We're going to go back to content types, but be sure to watch until the end of this video because I'm going to share with you a bucket list goal that I recently accomplished. In this document library, I want to leverage content types. For instance, I have car invoices, motorcycle invoices, and luckily the process is same as before. I'm gonna hop back to our content type gallery and let's make a boat invoice. The process is the same, except down here, I choose document content types instead of list content types. And then under here, I'm gonna go and choose document.
and click create. The process is the same as last time where I come in here and add all the column I care about and click save. But here's what's really cool. I can come under advanced settings and I can upload a template. Like let's say every time somebody buys a boat, I want this template to appear. I can select upload, choose my file, click save, and then back inside of my library, once I go down to library settings, let's click on add from site content types existing. I click add. And now when I click on new, I have this boat invoice I can select, fill out whatever I need to here. And back in my library, click on details here and then select boat specific items. I got my columns filled out here. And what's nice is I don't need a type column. Like, is this a boat? Is this a motorcycle? If I click on add column and I go to show or hide columns, I have this column right here called content type that was made for me once I started using content types. And then this tells me right here which type of document it is. And all my rules about required columns still follows. Like if I drag a document here, that's a motorcycle. If I go to any of the details about it, and then I switch this to a motorcycle invoice, it's immediately going to start yelling at me that I need to fill in the color because it's required. But if I flip this to a boat invoice suddenly that warning goes away because in my case, boat doesn't require a color. If it's your first time with content types, you might've noticed that when you made one, all of a sudden, all these icons went away, but you could totally get them back. Click on new, edit new menu, and here they all are if you want them. The last tip I'll say is I almost always avoid this button right here to make new columns because when you do that, your columns just live in this particular document library or this list. If you are making columns, even if you're not using content types, I highly suggest you come down here into site information, click on site columns, and make your column from here. When you do it here, making columns in the site settings allows you to share those columns in all those other areas. That's why when I made my boat invoice, I can come in here and add from existing columns and just reuse the same columns when I made the car and the boat list item. And if you look closely, when I choose boat invoice, I have things like price and hull material. But then if I come up here and switch it up to car invoice, all of a sudden I get different columns here. As cool as it is to have these dynamic columns, one thing that's kind of annoying is if you come in here into edit grid view, your users could still do weird stuff like you can go make a yacht, a convertible, or enter transmission for a boat even though you're not supposed to. That part's annoying, but you can train your users to instead always use the form. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out that free training below, and I got one more surprise for you. My bucket list goal, I finally got to go to the X Games. This right here, I filmed from my phone. Every time I think databases are hard, I just look at that.